So uh, very much thank you for the for the introduction. So the presentation itself will be started by Julian. Please, Julian, go ahead. Yes, thank you, thank you to us. Uh, so the dear EEG community and uh, all participants, uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, thank you for inviting us uh, to participate in this event uh, as we're pleased to take the opportunity and to be a part of Evening Lecture. My name is Yulia Dimchuk and uh, uh, I am a board, uh, um, of, uh, board member of uh, the NGO Geothermal Ukraine and uh, jointly with my colleague uh, Taras Popadinik, the head of the board uh, and the co-founder of the organization, <laughs> we are going to make a presentation uh, about our current activities about geothermal potential of Ukraine and uh, a key insight of harnessing geothermal energy from uh, uh, much oil and gas fields. Uh, so uh, let's start and uh, I wish you all an exciting uh, journey in the next hour with us. Uh, so uh, as you see, our presentation is divided into three main sections. And uh, in the first part, uh, I will talk about the geothermal prospect of Ukraine, uh, in particular in the western part. And we will discuss about the ge geothermal history, uh, types of geothermal energy sources, the value of temperatures, heat flow and geothermal gradient distribution, uh, as well as geology settings. And in the second part uh, of the presentation, Taras will provide information about geothermal energy harnessing models, opportunities for oil and gas industry, uh, different geothermal application options and experience of repurposing oil and gas wells uh, in Ukraine. Uh, so the next please Taras. So uh, the first is uh, about the geothermal potential of Ukraine. So uh, let me briefly introduce myself. Uh, I'm a graduated from uh, Taras Shevchenko National University of Kyiv, the Institute of Geology as a petroleum geologist. And um, also I have a degree in international economics from Kyiv National Economic University uh, named after Vadim Haitman. And my work experience started uh, in Shell as a geophysicist, where I was responsible for day-to-day uh, -day quality, uh, technical quality control of the gravity and serving data resulting from uh, 3D uh, acquisition. Uh, from 2015, uh, I uh, uh, headed uh, uh, middle and senior management positions and uh, another group companies uh, where I participated and supported integrated project management. Uh, of the EU-funded pro uh, R&D projects under Horizon 2020 program. And uh, on the slide, you can see such projects. Uh, and um, one of them, uh, Crowd Thermal and Reflect, uh, are related with geothermal energy. <laughs> and within uh, this project, uh, an exciting geothermal well data includes uh, fluid properties were collected uh, and um, analyzes the geothermal pilot sites uh, um, were determined. And uh, as Ukrainian representative of uh, <clears throat> Europe Network of Research in Geoenergy, in uh, 2022, I also was involved uh, in uh, uh, such projects like Histories, uh, where I provided geological uh, assessment of the existing underground gas storage facilities for hydrogen storage. Uh, and uh, the second project uh, is uh, the uh, CTS, it's uh, about uh, uh, CO2 transport and storage uh, directly uh, from uh, the ship. And in 2022, I joined the NGO uh, Geothermal Ukraine and uh, jointly with my geothermal uh, colleagues and the Geothermal Ukraine team, we are involved in the feasibility study for geothermal projects in Ukraine. The next please, Taras. So the development of geothermal energy uh, in Ukraine is divided into three main periods. And the beginning is timed uh, to the 50s of the last centuries. And uh, since then, numerous prospecting and exploration works uh, for thermal waters have been carried out in Ukraine. And uh, about 100 uh, geothermal wells were drilled uh, and um, uh, thermophysical properties of water bearing rocks were measured. The next stage uh, uh, took place in the 80s and 90s. And in this period, um, uh, nine geothermal energy facilities uh, with a total heat capacity of uh, 11 uh, megawatt were built. And um, the last stage has been going on since uh, uh, 2000, and um, uh, this period is well known to, uh, of widespread biological uh, use of geothermal resources in Ukraine, in particular in the western Transcarpathia and in the south in the Crimea, and um, uh, the development of geothermal aquifers uh, by heat pump uh, installation was also developed. Uh, unfortunately, the geothermal um, was not proceed due to a lack uh, 
of uh, national support and um, the different uh, financing programs. And um, the Russia invasions of Ukraine uh, had brought instability and the energy crisis in Ukraine. Uh, so the energy system is damaged uh, due to uh, heavy shelling uh, and the target attacks. And uh, this forces us uh, to review the geothermal potential as we need clean and uh, uh, affordable energy source with uh, focus on uh, diversifications of Ukraine's energy uh, system reducing depends on imported uh, uh, fossil fuels. The next, please, Taras. So uh, what we actually have in Ukraine, so there are three types uh, of geothermal energy sources in Ukraine. Uh, the first one is subgeothermal or shallow. Uh, the second one is hydrothermal, a heat of deep underground thermal waters. And the last one is the petrothermal, the heat of superheated dry rocks. And uh, hydrothermal resources with a temperature from uh, 40 to our 100 Celsius degrees um, today in Ukraine are the most uh, widespread uh, and uh, currently uh, such um, source are suitable for technical use uh, as geothermal energy. The next please. And uh, these hydrothermal waters, uh, they are formed uh, and circulated at the depths uh, uh, near one kilometers uh, within four uh, geosynchronal artesian basins in the eastern part, in the southern and in the western part of Ukraine. Uh, and uh, on this map, you can see that uh, in the east, the promising regions are confined to uh, Donetsk cold belt and Dnipro Donetsk depression marked as uh, five and six uh, in the tectonic uh, map above. And in the west, uh, the promising regions are confined uh, to uh, Transcarpatia and Transcarpatia depression. Uh, you can see it uh, as uh, 14 and 15 in the map. And uh, in the south, uh, prospective regions for the use of geothermal energy uh, are um, related with the Black Sea depression and the Scythian plate in the Crimea. Uh, and uh, on the map below, you can find the best uh, regions for geoenergy development, which are related with the mentioned uh, uh, tectonic structures. Next, please. Um, all geothermal promising uh, areas uh, are related with uh, oil and gas bearing regions in Ukraine. And uh, a lot of data gathering uh, estimations and, ge and geothermal assessment uh, were provided uh, due to oil and gas well data. So uh, as of uh, 2020, uh, there are about um, uh, 458 hydrocarbon fields in Ukraine and uh, more than 10,000 wells uh, uh, have been drilled. Uh, so the main oil and gas regions in Ukraine uh, to nowadays is the Dnipro Donetsk uh, Rift Basin in the east, uh, which um, has thickness uh, sedimentary layers with the good uh, uh, filtration properties. And uh, actually they create a favorable uh, conditions for um, uh, formation of geothermal resources. And um, uh, these resources include um, uh, heated uh, underground water of oil and gas wells at the depths from uh, 1.5 up to uh, 5 kilometers. And uh, the southern oil and gas bearing uh, regions is also promising for geothermal development. And um, there are wells uh, with the depths up to uh, 2 kilometers and the wellhead temperature is about uh, 50, 70 Celsius degrees. And uh, as can be seen in the western part, uh, the almost uh, uh, hydrocarbon uh, fields are related with uh, Precarpatia and a few uh, in uh, Transcarpatia. And uh, uh, later we will look at uh, these regions in more detail. According to the values uh, of the heat flow, uh, the territory of Ukraine is um, uh, divided uh, into three uh, zones. So um, uh, it's uh, like the uh, low, intermediate and high. Uh, on this uh, map, uh, map and uh, on the table, uh, you can see that um, a low heat flow is about uh, uh, 2260 uh, milliwatt per square meter, and uh, they mostly refer to the central part of Ukraine. And the geothermal gradient in most cases uh, uh, doesn't uh, exceed two, two Celsius degrees per 100 meters. And uh, intermediate um, values of heat flow uh, is about uh, 50 70. Uh, milliwatt per square meters, and they correspond to such structures like Stepikrania, Donetsk, and Precarpatia. And uh, geothermal um, 
uh, gradient uh, ranges from uh, 2.3 up to uh, 3.5 Celsius degrees. And uh, the high uh, heat flow uh, varies from um, 80 to more than 130 milliwatt per square meter. And um, uh, in Transcarpathia, the geothermal gradient mostly is about uh, like 5 and up to 8.4 Celsius uh, degrees. Uh, regarding temperature distribution, uh, on this slide, uh, there are two maps, uh, uh, figures temperature distribution uh, at the depths um, uh, around uh, about uh, 500 and uh, uh, 3000 meters. And um, uh, within, ter within territories of Ukraine, uh, temperature at the depths uh, of 500 meters, it varies from um, uh, 13 to uh, 43 like Celsius degrees, at, and um, at the depths of three kilometers, it ranges from uh, 55 to 145 Celsius degrees. It depends from uh, the region. And uh, it should be highlighted that um, on the Transcarpathia depression, there is a temperature anomaly uh, of, of uh, over more than uh, 200 Celsius degrees at the depths of uh, four kilometers. So regarding the estimated potential uh, geothermal capacity, uh, as you can see on the map, uh, the total geothermal uh, technical potential of Ukraine is about um, uh, 10,810. Uh, so uh, this calculation was provided by the Institute of Renewable Energy of Ukraine. And according to their assessments, uh, there are uh, 15 geothermal energy facilities with uh, a total capacity of uh, 86.2 milliwatt up uh, potential available for construction in Ukraine. And uh, all these sites um, with the location and uh, potential estimated uh, install capacity uh, could be found on the table from the right side. And um, I would like to say that uh, currently in Ukraine, there are only uh, three operating geothermal energy facilities and uh, it's a heat stations with a total capacity uh, only uh, 1.5 milli uh, megawatt, and uh, we have no uh, uh, any no install capacity for electricity generation. So, if we are talking about uh, current status of geothermal in Ukraine, so the last year Ukraine um, uh, approved energy strategy of Ukraine until 2050, and uh, uh, due to uh, security. Uh, issues, uh, it's not free available and public, but uh, the strategy, it's a set ambitions uh, target of increasing renewable energy source capacity, in particular geothermal, um, in generally with a focus on the decentralization energy system model. So on its uh, way to geothermal, Ukraine could um, achieve some values and of course it faces with some challenges. So if we are talking about values, um, uh, of course, it's firstly energy security and independence. Uh, all we know that geothermal is a stable, reliable and local source of energy. And uh, so the autonomous decentralized heating and energy system supply could be developed. Uh, it's opportunities for new job creations in Ukraine and uh, reduce energy costs and uh, carbon footprint. But despite uh, all this, uh, we ho also have uh, a lot of uh, different challenges like uh, uh, we should establish a, cl a clear uh, regulatory framework, so we we'll, like define the land rights, permitting processes uh, to sep uh, set up a tariff policy. So it's important uh, step we need to be achieved. So uh, also we have to increase public uh, awareness and um, uh, trust to geothermal energy because we have uh, uh, in Ukraine um, a lot of people don't know uh, what is geothermal energy as well. And uh, also we have to overcome a competition with conventional fuels. And um, one of the big problem uh, to, to move on the geothermal projects is that the lack of investments and uh, access to financing programs. And uh, uh, today we have in Ukraine uh, currently developed only thermal water resources. And in Transcarpathia, there are a lot of uh, uh, nice uh, resort for balneological purposes. And uh, on these uh, pictures, you can find uh, um, actually uh, the most uh, well known and famous uh, um, complexes uh, and for uh, where thermal waters 
uh, are used for recreation and uh, balneological purposes. So all of these um, uh, thermal uh, pools uh, are located in Transcarpathia and also we have some in the Crimea, but uh, uh, due to occupations of the territory, we don't know what actually uh, now happened with them. And uh, let's talk a little about the geothermal potential in the western part of Ukraine. Uh, so the target location of uh, our RMD activities are Transcarpathia, Lviv, and Ivano Frankivsk region. And um, uh, the results of our data gathering and uh, analysis uh, allowed us to uh, generalize average temperature of the water and deep heat uh, source water at the available depth. So uh, it depends uh, depends on the region. The temperature vary uh, vary from um, uh, 60 to uh, 140 Celsius degrees at the depths from uh, one to three kilometers. And uh, you can find this information is in, in the table above. And uh, there are also uh, in Transcarpathia about uh, 30 geothermal fields and uh, manifestations and. Um, a lot of different research have been done there, and in the table below, there are the priority geothermal fields that are suitable for industrial development. And um, in the table, you can find some calculations of heat capacity and energy generation provided by our partners that are suitable for industrial development, including heat supply of different sanatoriums and residential buildings. And uh, uh, this the most um, uh, promising fields are uh, located in Barehova, Kosono, Tereblia, and um, uh, other fields mentioned here. And um, uh, how we uh, have come to explain these temperature anomalies in Transcarpathia? So the Transcarpathia is uh, a neogene depression with a total thickness of uh, uh, up to three kilometers. And uh, it was formed as the results of uh, development of salt diapiric and volcanogenic formation and uh, is complicated uh, by the series of different faults. And uh, in Transcarpathia, there are two structural faults. And uh, the lower is craniogen and the upper is a neogen. And uh, the local temperature anomalies are explained by the presence of um, a deep heat source connected to the uh, surface through fault zones. And uh, thermal waters, uh, they are in generally confined to uh, neogen and reservoirs are presented mostly by uh, tufts, uh, tufts, uh, tufts and sandstones. The next please. And um, on this slide, uh, you can find um, the geological map and the cross sections of two geothermal fields located in Transcarpathia. It's a uh, field Velika Palat mapped map as uh, one. And uh, the second one is the Nizhny Solotvene in the Uyghur district. Uh, so they're located within Transcarpathian Basin. And uh, as an example, we can see um, how complicated the geology is um, characterized by fault zones, the salt diapirism, and the discontinuous uh, tectonics uh, style. And um, uh, despite geothermal sites, um, we are looking also to um, match oil and gas fields uh, with um, available existing infrastructure. And uh, in particular, uh, information obtained from oil and gas wells uh, is um, a value to understand and uh, uh, to evaluate the uh, feasibility of extracting heat uh, and uh, oil electricity from reservoir. And uh, such well could be uh, repurposed into geothermal. And uh, this approach has not yet been implemented in Ukraine. And um, uh, Taras will uh, provide more about this. So um, uh, please, Taras, Taras, go ahead. Thank you, Yulia. Uh, let me continue this uh, presentation uh, with the third part uh, of uh, the name of the, of the subtitle of the Harnessing Geothermal Energy from Mature Oil and Gas Fields in the Western Part of Ukraine. A few words about myself. <clears throat> I have 15 years of uh, working experience, particularly on oil and gas projects, uh, both in Ukraine and internationally, for conventional and un unconventional EMP activities with uh, knowledge in uh, well planning, drilling, well engineering, well operation and analytics, as in some business negotiation, integrated project management while 
information the contracts product. I was graduated for from the Ivanov McKees National Technical University the following years uh, with a master's uh, in petroleum engineering with a major in drilling subject in 20, 20, uh, 2013. In 2020, I was graduated with the same degree in the Ukrainian Catholic University with the business school with a master's in management with a program in innovations. And uh, since 2022, I am the GT candidate in my uh, uh, primary university uh, of uh, petroleum engineering and technologies, where I am um, making my research in terms of the, the particular the similar topic which we are speaking about. I uh, had the chance to work within various companies, uh, both major of them are internationally uh, working and uh, so, uh, and uh, within the project's uh, experience, I I am involved in the feasibility study for the geothermal direct use project in the western part of Ukraine with the partnership of uh, Icelandic uh, companies Varkis and Isor under the uh, Sustainable Development Partnership Fund, uh, supporting from the uh, Icelandic government. And uh, being the SPE uh, officer of Central Ukrainian uh, Professional Chapter, as a relations uh, officer, uh, I am a co-organizer of the European Energy Hackathon uh, 2023. Let me speak about the general approach about geothermal energy projects. All of us uh, know that uh, the most uh, widespread uh, uh, model is the open loop system. Here you might see how does it look like and uh, the cascade uh, approach for uh, uh, for implementing the project uh, in, the, in the fastest way and get the return on investment as, as, as fast as possible. And uh, on this slide uh, provided from the SP Global, there is a very nice picture. How does the possible geothermal energy models looks like? So you can find here like the conventional and unconventional way of, of harnessing the conventional, of course, it's a direct heat and hydrothermal system as a so-called open loop system with unconventional, very similar to the oil gas, of course, is a advanced geothermal system, AGS, enhanced geothermal system, EGS, and super hot rock system, SH, SHR. And uh, speaking about the opportunity for the oil and gas, industry for possible geothermal energy harnessing. Uh, there is uh, nothing to add additionally that uh, we know that most of the oil, big oil and gas companies are now diversifying their investment into the renewable sector and the primary option of course for them is the geothermal one and not only the operator but also the, uh, the big service companies are uh, creating this uh, part of the business related to the uh, energy transition and uh, related to geothermal projects. Here is the main geothermal energy application op options. So you might find the breakdown uh, where on which possible temp bottom floor temperature uh, the application process might be applied. And on the right side, we have some kind of the examples of the potential application on the real uh, life. Let's speak about the types of the possible geothermal energy harnessing from the particular oil and gas wells. We know that we have the two options at least, the, the open loop system and the closed loop. And uh, for both of the options, the, the, there are pros and cons particularly. So once we speak about the open system, it's uh, uh, the positive uh, side for that is the it's proven technology already and uh, it's uh, high temperature and flow presumed to be implied for the cons is uh, still expensive and might provide some brine issues and ESP pumping cost, which is preliminary, might be high. And for the closed loop system, the pros is no brine issues, no contact with the formation, can use for any working fluid, low pumping cost uh, and uh, lower investment cost. Uh, in most cases, for the cons, it's uh, still unproved. It, it's not uh, it's not widespread yet because it's in some uh, stage of uh, testing still. 
less efficient if we speak about efficiency level and uh, might be compromising the feeder flow. A few words about the current project done in, in this topic of repurposing oil uh, wells in Ukraine. Recently, there was one project which is already finished uh, with, with the funding from the NEFCO fund uh, in the Dolina city in one of the East region. There was the model done for the open loop system. And uh, uh, yeah, it's a good start for the asset, which might be very easily uh, applied for the nearest uh, consumers. Actually, the wells are located in the town. For the mature oil and gas fields in the western part, we might highlight several of them, uh, break down on the region, which we are interested in at the moment, based on our current project. So we might find the, uh, the name of each field, which highlight within highlighted map and the number on that. And we might uh, find uh, also the, we might find the sense of the bottom hole temperature based on the depth on each of the field. So uh, speaking about the geothermal potential in Transcarpathia particularly, uh, we might divide it into the several application options based on the bottom hole temperature at least and in some uh, reservoir, uh, reservoir uh, type. So for the direct use, it uh, might be applied the, the, the resources with the bottom hole temperature up to 75 degrees. And uh, then we might think about the binary system powered uh, power and heat generation within the uh, bottom hole temperature up to the 150 degrees and uh, uh, the EGS system with the, with the highest one. So for each of the project, we do have to have in place the well screening criteria if we think about the potential repurposing of oil and gas wells and uh, which we did it for our project we we have to have in place such a list of the well data uh, so the most important of course is the well life cycle history so the at least as we call it passport of well passport and some logs were done in this well uh, so we have to know about the well board condition whether it would be some opticals and maybe fish the casing and cement integrity uh, level. The surface location shall be checked as well, and the, the proximity to the end user. The uh, heat consumers might not be stable one based on the seasonal level of, of, uh, of the consuming the heat. And the uh, variable geo geophysical and geothermal conditions has to be checked. Of course, there's uh, physical parameters like temperature, porosity, permeability, uh, and so on and so forth. And on the right uh, side, you might find uh, some picture from the real uh, uh, from the real wells uh, on the uh, on that place which was under the our subject of research. So, uh, some few words about the well inspection and risk logistic while making the project of repurposing of oil gas wells to geothermal. At least we have to have the inspection and action which typically includes the after checking the uh, well conditions so we might check the fish if it's available so in case it's available we have to get it out some cleaning uh, activities uh, and uh, establish the well bore fluid composition the monitor well bore for the methane at co 2 h 2 s emissions such as, such, such as that Corrosion uh, environment, uh, some logging, uh, uh, caliper logging run to check the casing condition, perform acoustic cement bond lock, and uh, and uh, for the rig, major cost for recovery maintenance has to be also included into consideration. Let's speak a little bit about the current global innovation inputs, uh, which we might uh, seen before and currently. So we have to highlight that there is uh, lots of projects within the single well downfall heat exchanger solution applied uh, recently and still in the process 
so-called EOR technology. The EOR is a company which provides a very uh, uh, uncommon but uh, uh, promising uh, technology, which is under the testing, and the first results are already came out from the Canadian project, and now they are testing the, the technology in the Europe, EU, actually, in several countries. Uh, Germany is one of them, the first of them, actually. And the EGS, also the part of that project, uh, as well. Uh, some alternative application while uh, harnessing the geothermal energy is the EOR, the commissioning, the CO2 storage, hydrogen storage, recovery of lithium and other uh, critical raw materials, etc. So let's speak about some benefits for repurposing of oil and gas wells uh, to geothermal. So uh, we understand that while repurpose the, the uh, idle well, uh, we will prolong the economical lifetime. Uh, the higher cost of decommissioning for of the abandoned well avoided. The cost of drilling new wells, of course, uh, uh, will be eliminated by by using the the current well, which is uh, huge benefit for the common uh, budget of the project. The geothermal heat and power provide the local distributed energy source, increasing energy security, as you mentioned before. Uh, the geothermal system is suited for the base load type use. And uh, the heat plant is suited for district heating purposes, so you can easily connect to the local district heating and provide a clean and reliable source of the heat. And the geothermal energy is environmental friendly, sustainable and renewable as well. And uh, the space to build the geothermal facility is more compact than for the other power or heat plants, of course. Uh, so this is... Uh, as of the general approach, and uh, for particular for the Ukraine uh, side, I would also add that uh, Ukraine possesses a huge inventory of dry and abandoned oil gas wells, with the oil and gas history more than 255, uh, 250 years in place on the western uh, region, uh, current western region of Ukraine, and uh, so so uh, so we've got lots of. Uh, uh, well construction, operation and maintenance experience for oil and gas infrastructure. Within the disadvantages for repurposing abandoned oil and gas wells, we might highlight that we still have lack of such experience, positively applied experience within the real commercial project. Uh, we still have to include this environment, uh, the integrity risks involved for the uh, uh, using the abandoned wells to repurpose it. The hydrocarbon producing zone shall to be isolated, which is also the risk. Uh, the power generation is inefficient and technically only possible when the temperature of the brine is high enough. To speak, a uh, common approach, but not to the, for the older technology, but for the conventional, it's like commonly mentioned 150 and more. The heat extraction requires consumers in the uh, near proximity to the well. Uh, the investment costs are still relatively high. Geothermal heat is not well suited for drying load, such as space heating when there is no other heat load. The condition in the well bore might be harsh, as I said, within the CO2 and H2S presence, as well as uh, high pressure, high temperature fluids might be also the issues. The operation and maintenance costs might be also high depending on the system, especially if we're using the electrical submersible pumps. Though, so the power consumption of the of the those pumps, pumps are still high enough. And the implementation time for the geothermal projects are fairly long, so we might think about the projects to be uh, to be calculated within the minimum of 30 years and, and up to the 51. So, next steps about the geoenergy projects to be implemented. The general approach is uh, very similar to the oil gas project. So, we might highlight the key points here as a preliminary survey exploration, pre feasibility study, uh, the test drilling, the pre project review and feasibility study the field development phase and power plan 
construction and uh, the say project development uh, final uh, results. And uh, within this, I would highlight that uh, you might find us also within our website and write us to our web, uh, our mail here highlighted will be glad to communicate with you and answer your question and possibly making some common projects together. Thank you very much. If any questions, please let us know. Thank you. Thank you, Taras. Thank you, Yulia.